What's up everybody? It's Bill with Honest Open Permaculture Hot Farm and today we're going to be putting together another 18 day compost in the Berkeley method. The same method Jeff Lawton teaches, the same method I've done before and shown you and this time we're going to switch it up a little bit. So let's talk about how we're going to switch it up. Okay first off before we start I know we've got a lot of new subscribers lately and I really appreciate it. We passed that 1000 mark, been flying past it, the channel's been doing awesome. Thank you very much. Just want to introduce myself real quick. I'm Bill. Uh, we have a small homestead in North Carolina. We're working to become completely self-sufficient and you're catching us right at the beginning of our journey while we're learning, teaching what we're learning, showing my mistakes, showing the good, the bad, and the ugly. We're going to build another compost pile. I have done a series on this before. I will put that playlist up here if you want to check that out first. I did those compost videos in the early, excuse me, in the late winter, right before fall, so it's still cold. And right now, we're at the end of summer, so it's still hot, still getting in the 90s every day. So this is gonna be a complete opposite scenario from freezing weather to 90 degree weather. We're building two different types of compost piles here. A lot of requests, a lot of questions from the first videos, from the first series was, what about in the summer when I have all this green material where do I get my carbon from? How am I going to make my compost piles to get my carbon? So that's one thing we're going to we're going to do here also and only use one material, one material that most everybody can get their hands on, grass clippings for the nitrogen and for the carbon. Just got to off the mower and cut these grass clippings. I went in rows and made sure I cut the grass clippings as many times as my mower could. The smaller the grass clippings, the better gives more surface area on the grass clipping. So if you have one long piece of grass clipping, only so much bacteria can be on it. But if you break that down to a thousand pieces, a lot more bacteria can get on that surface because it has a lot more edges for it to go around. So that's the idea of getting it as small as possible. Now for the carbon, uh, about five days ago, I came out here and mowed first and then left that grass clippings in a row and let it dry. And then I came back two days later, I had raked it up together, and then two days later I turned it so it doesn't start to cook and go anaerobic and just disappear into the ground. So now pretty much what we have here in this pile is hay. So that's where we're getting our carbon from in this pile, only out of grass clippings. Really green and then really dry. Some other things we're going to need for our compost pile is water. So we brought water out here. And I like to cover my compost pile so it keeps the moisture in, and if it does storm or rain, it doesn't get too much moisture in it. So let's go ahead and build this thing. So we're gonna start layering this compost pile. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some of the green, really green the grass clippings. We're gonna lay them on the bottom first. I'll get about oh, four inches or so in each layer. Get it nice and thick. When building a compost pile, one of the things you need to think about is the size of the compost pile. It has to be at least one cubic yard or one cubic meter, which is three foot by three foot by three foot. That's the minimum it needs to be. That is because the bacteria and the microorganisms in that pile need that much area. There needs to be that many of them heating up and eating and doing their thing to be able to heat the pile up. And one of the benefits of heating a pile up is it will kill off a lot of the seeds that are in here. I'm using grass clippings, so there is gonna be seeds in here. It's not gonna be completely seed free. So this hot composting method will help kill off the seeds. So let's talk about the four important ingredients you need for a compost pile. We've talked about a couple of them already, which is a source of nitrogen, which is this right here. You need a source of carbon, which we're using the, the hay, the dried, to tell the color difference. We need water and we need oxygen. Those four things are the four most important part of a compost pile. You have four, those four things, you're gonna make yourself some compost. In the Berkeley method, in the 18 day method, first we put together our compost pile. Then we let it sit for four days. After it sits for four days, we come in and we completely turn the compost pile over from one spot to the next, 
mix it all together, rehydrate it, and then let it sit for two more days. And we do that, it's a, it's, like I said, it's an 18 day process. So we do that until the 18th day. All right, so as we're mixing this together, we need to make sure we take our water and we water this thing down real good. We want it nice and damp. Almost, almost dripping, not quite. Go ahead and call that a wrap for tonight. I'm gonna get it wet one more time, make sure it's good and moist, and then cover it with the tarp. And I'll be back with you in no time. Actually, I'm not gonna make you wait four days. It's gonna be just about like this. Yeah, I know, I got a different shirt on, but still, you didn't have to wait four days, right? All right, so I've already un uncovered this compost pile. Let's walk around it real quick. Show you what it looks like up and close. Just nothing but grass clippings. So as soon as I pulled this tarp off over here, I could feel how hot it was. Just by touching it, I could feel how hot it was. It is warming up nicely. Without a doubt, it's getting to temperature. I did bring a little thermometer down. It's not a great thermometer. Right here. And I did temp it inside with in some ice water, got it to zero, so I know it's correct. So outside right now, it is about 84. Let's stick this right in the top of the pile and see what it does. Now we wanna get this pile heated up to between 122 and 165 degrees. It flew past the 122 mark. So we know we're at least there. We don't want it to get over to 165. It gets too hot over 165. It'll start killing off a lot of the bacteria and microorganisms that are in there working this compost pile, what's making it heat up. Um, so if it gets too hot, it'll kill them off too much. We've been in there for, I don't know, 30 seconds an hour or so, and we're about 150. I couldn't, that's, that's just about perfect there. We'll probably end up in the middle of this pile, let's pull out a little bit and get, oh my goodness, that's one test too for you, it's the ouch test. <laughs> it's 80 something degrees outside and there's steam coming out of here. Let me see if I can get it. I don't know if you guys can see the steam, but the ouch test is another one. You stick your hands in there and you wanna pull your hand right back out, you know it's hot. So let's get that in there, let that sit for 30 seconds or so. It's fogging up, but there's no way you guys are going to be able to see what's in there. And we're losing heat as I'm digging the hole. We're about 155 is what it's saying. So that's good, that's good, that's good. That's exactly what we want, guys. So now it's time to turn this compost over. We'll do a, a wet test also. I'll show you how to do a wet test. See if your compost is moist enough. Because remember, one of the most important ingredients of a compost pile is water. I just said water is important, one of the four most important things in a compost pile. Other three is carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen. Oh, that's, yeah, that's three. The carbon and nitrogen, we've already added to this pile in the grass clippings, the dried and the green. The water is obvious. We're gonna get that from those jugs that we have back there. But the oxygen, some people, it's not obvious, how do you add the oxygen? Well, that's what we're doing right now. By turning this pile, by getting these pieces all mixed up and getting air all back in between these pieces is gonna put oxygen back in this pile. Turning it is very important. Just as important as those four ingredients is the size of your pile. One cubic yard or one cubic meter, which is three foot by three foot by three foot square. That's as small as you can have it. You can't have it too big. Well, I guess if you don't have the right materials to turn your pile, you can have it too big. 
but if you had the right like bobcats I mean you could have huge piles of compost if you had the right equipment so let's do a wetness test we're about halfway through this pile not quite but we're into the center of it so let's do a wetness test a wetness test I don't even know if that's the right phrase but y'all know what I mean see how wet this pile is let's grab up some material we're gonna squeeze it put it in a little ball squeeze it and we're gonna see if it drips or not so this material is really hot right here too so we'll get it squeeze it into a ball get it nice and tight I can already tell it's too dry it's not wanting to really form into a ball right so once you get into a ball you want to be able to squeeze it and liquid should just barely drip out or run down your arm and it's not doing that. I can tell it's too dry. So we're gonna need add some water to it. Now add your water periodically as you're turning it to get all your layers wet. And add that important ingredient to all your different layers. Quick little pro tip for y'all. When you're doing a compost pile, I would recommend having a pitchfork. It's really hard to scoop this stuff with a shovel I mean, I guess you could do it with your hands, but this stuff is 150 degrees, 160 degrees. That's not going to feel very good. And it would take a lot longer. Some of y'all may be thinking, Bill, why are you turning the pile off? It's heating up. Obviously, it's in there working. Why don't you just leave it, let it work? Um, it's, uh, I could. I could let it sit there and cook for a little while until it cools back down, then turn it again and add some more nitrogen, light it back up, heat it up that way. Um, but this way, you don't have to keep adding stuff to it if you don't let them burn it out all at once. Um, what that is gonna do also in me turning it every two days now, is that it's gonna kill off a lot of the bacteria and the microorganisms that are in there. It's gonna kill off most of them. And then the new ones are gonna start feeding on the old ones that were there so it's gonna sounds kind of cannibalistic and and raw but essentially the bacteria and the microorganisms are feeding off their previous generations and becoming bigger and becoming a more of a population because there's more food to eat that's one of the reasons why we turn it besides just getting oxygen into it also when turning a compost pile from taking it from one spot to the next spot the best course of action to come out the pile is to try to pick off around the pile, get all the stuff around the outside of it first, and put it to where it's going to heat up in the center now. Because most of that material on the outside of the pile did not get the benefit of heating up to 150, 100, you know, 150 degrees. So by putting it back in the middle here, what that's going to do is give that material an opportunity to heat up to 150 degrees hopefully kill any of the weed seeds, or at least most of the weed seeds that are in there. So they won't be able to germinate once they get to that temperature. Let's give you a walk around, see what it looks like. It stands about about three and a half, almost four foot tall. It's, hard, it's kind of deceiving. It's in a little um, a little valley, a little gully that dips in right here at the top of this hill. So it's a little de deceiving on the height. It's like we walk up this way, we're way above it. But if we come down on its on its level, at least four, five foot wide. So it's plenty big enough. Still looks like grass clippings right now. Can't really distinguish between anything else. I will be back to you in two days. Actually, you know what? You don't have to wait two days. I had to wait two days, you didn't. So we're back at it, as you can see. Time to turn this thing over one more time. They give you a walk around. Still looks like dried grass clippings. I can tell it's warm on top. Let's grab the thermometer real quick and temp this thing. Oh yeah, it's working good. Rising fast. If you remember, between 122 and 165 is where we want to be at. We are definitely in between there. 
All right, so we're there on temperature. Let's turn this pile now. And if you remember my tips, pick apart the outside, then go to the middle. Make sure we get all those materials in here heated up. So it doesn't stink, it doesn't smell anaerobic. It's really hot, I can see it steaming. You can also see the material starting to change colors. Almost like a moldy mildew over this material. I mean, it's really starting to break down quick. See, the material's definitely too dry, so we're gonna have to get it wet. Unlike my first compost video that was at the end of the winter, this one's at the end, towards the end of the summer, and we're not, we don't get as much rain towards the end of the summer. Remember, when you're turning this, you're, we're getting oxygen in it. That's the main reason why we're turning this, to check the wetness and to get oxygen in it. So don't be afraid to fluff it up a little bit when you're turning it from one spot to the next. So we're gonna water this down one more time. Check. We'll check how wet it is. I've kind of briefly shown you, but we wanna get it wet. We wanna show you what it looks like when it's as wet as it should be. Now there's also different styles of piles. This is just one stack it high pile. There's also what's called a windrow, which you can have it long ways, as long as it's at least three foot tall, have it long ways and you can turn it that way. Like turn it from maybe this spot and then turn it over to here or take the spots and just move your move your caterpillar along, kind of crawl it along the floor. All right, so let's get some of this material. Let's not get it right on the outside because obviously that's gonna be really wet. Let's go in a little bit on it. All right. So like I said earlier, put it in a ball. Get it tight in a ball. You don't have to squeeze too hard here. But when you get it that tight in the ball, then squeeze. And then you see water start to drip out running down my arm, we're good. Now see how it stayed in a ball there? Last time it didn't stay in a ball, but it will break apart really easily. That's it guys. It is gonna be a couple days before you see me now. Because I have to wait two days, turn it, wait two more days, turn it, wait two more days, turn it. I'm doing it like this in this format this time because I don't wanna have to you guys to have to go to nine different videos to see what it looks like to do an 18 day compost. So I'll put three, four videos in each one and go from that way. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please give me a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe, should be down there in the corner and share this with a friend guys. Later.